at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. The last of three men accused in the summer killing of a teenage mother of two has been indicted on capital murder charges. She was shot to death during a robbery that police say netted her killers little more than a piggy bank filled with coins. Here's Paul Venema with more on that murder and the indictment. Unanswered phone calls to their sister who lived here could only mean trouble. That's what 19 year old Jasmine Williams family told us last summer. I just got a call saying from my other little sister that she was worried and that Jamma wasn't answering and I tried reaching out to Jamma myself and she wasn't answering. By the time they arrived, there were police everywhere but no answers. We don't know nothing. We just know that she's in the room full of blood. We don't know if she was shot, stabbed. Schneider would later learn that her daughter, Jasmine Williams, a mother of two toddlers, had been shot to death. Neighbors reported hearing at least six shots. She didn't deserve to die like that. Nobody does. And I want justice. Last month, 18-year-old John Tavian Saunders was arrested and charged with killing her daughter. Today, an indictment alleging capital murder was returned against him. Police say that a cell phone, two pairs of sneakers, a debit card, and a piggy bank filled with change had been taken during the murder. Two other men, Kyle Phillips and Dorian Murphy, are already jailed facing charges in Williams' death. Saunders bail set at $500,000. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. As we're approaching the 100,000 mark of total COVID-19 cases in Bear County, more than 30 restaurants in our area are rallying to stay open over the holidays safely, they say. They're using technology that manufacturers say scrubs the air, contributing to a safer environment. Devin Clark shows us how it works. We have, so we have sorbets and gelatos. Uh, we make them uh, fresh every day and switch our flavors up seasonally. Like other restaurants, Alamo Gelato and Panini has had to switch gears amid the pandemic. We just went straight to online orders, uh, to go orders. And so we were able to shut down to the public uh, while still being able to stay open. But now, Aaron Soltero says he and his staff members have figured out a way to allow customers back inside the Southtown store safely. You know, every every extra precaution that you can take is, you know, another bonus. That extra precaution, something customers may not even notice. It's called a pureware machine. Manufacturers say that while it's rather small and discreet, it has a huge job. To effectively remove the aerosols that contain viruses, bacteria, or other uh, airborne contaminants. One pureware is said to be able to clean an area the size of 550 football fields. So really powerful. And stores that are equipped with the pureware technology are also equipped with these QR codes that customers can scan to find out other locations in the area participating. You click that business and you can actually see the status you know, of all of the units there. The pureware machine itself runs about $1,300, but businesses can rent it for 90 bucks a month. Those already on board say it's a small price to pay for a big boost of confidence to keep people safe. So having this technology is going to help the customers to feel confident to get inside. We have more details on KSAT.com. In Southtown, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Sad, but not surprising. That's how a South Side doctor described how hard, much harder, the South and West sides of San Antonio are being impacted by COVID-19. The three districts covering that part of the city have higher rates of the disease and account for about half of the city's COVID-19 deaths. Dr. Stephen Argomedo notes that there are a lot of health problems in that area. They're now putting people at a higher risk. We see this on a day-to-day -day basis where you know, somebody has a heart attack and you say, well, was that a surprise given that their diabetes was so poorly controlled? Was that a surprise given that they've been smoking all their life or they've been drinking alcohol for a long period of time? Is that a surprise? While numbers from November looked a little less disproportionate, Metro Health's interim director says a lot of that is because things are getting worse in the northern half of the city. So wherever you live, keep taking those precautions. Well, despite many hospitals and doctors dealing with COVID-19 right now, flu season is here and cases are showing up in Bear County. Erica Hernandez spoke with Metro Health about what they are seeing and what we can expect and why it shouldn't be taken lightly. Usually this time of year, the flu season is in full swing and many cases are being reported. This year, the pandemic has shifted the focus on the flu, but it's still there and cases are showing up in Bear County just not as many. We're seeing a lot, a lot less flu than we have in previous years. 
Um, and that's the same for here in Bayer County as well. The reason for fewer cases could be due to several factors. People wearing face masks, social distancing, staying home when sick and less traveling. And, you know, I think there's a lot less, especially international travel, um, both ways, right? People coming here, people going there, uh, which sometimes could, you know, factor into transmission of disease as well. Despite all that, we can't forget the flu is around and Bear County has reported cases for influenza A and B. Flu is still out there with our hospitals, you know, seeing more patients being hospitalized due to COVID. Uh, we really don't need to you know, further impact that by seeing hospitalizations with flu as well. Metro Health did go on to tell us that you can get the flu and COVID-19 at the same time and that also it is not too late to get your flu shot. It is still available and it is the best way to protect yourself. Erica, if not this case at 12 News. It was no coincidence. That's what San Antonio police are saying after they found two men in similar trouble, both shot and both saying they had been shot somewhere else. Now police are sure those shootings are connected. And as Katrina Weber reports, they say one of the men was no victim. It almost seemed like deja vu. First San Antonio police are called to a West Side convenience store at West Military and Highway 90 and find a man suffering from a gunshot wound in his leg. When they spoke to him around 11 last night, he directed them to another location where he was shot. About a half hour later, they got a similar call and found a man who had been shot in his side. He was about four miles away in the 200 block of Jesse Avenue, also claiming he had been shot elsewhere. At first, police didn't know who was behind either shooting. Initially, police told us they suspected these two shootings might be related. Now they're convinced they are, and they say it looks like these two men shot each other. But they say the man who they found on Jesse Avenue was the first to pull his weapon and they consider him a suspect. The victim, the man found at the store, says during the argument, his necklace was ripped off his neck and his car tires were slashed. He says the suspect also pulled out a gun, causing him to grab his own weapon. According to police, both fired shots at the other, then both were taken to a hospital for treatment. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified the man hit and killed while running along I-35 on the city's east side. 37-year-old Dereka Elliott Manuel died Wednesday night after he was hit by an SUV near AT&T Parkway. According to police, he was running in the main lanes at the time. The driver of the SUV was unable to avoid hitting him and then hit a guardrail and wound up on the service road. Manuel died there at the scene. The driver is not expected to face any charges. In time saver traffic at this hour, the trans guide camera we're looking at here is I 10 in days of What you're looking at is the westbound lanes where it's down to just one lane. It's apparently an accident on the entrance ramp from UTSA Boulevard to the exit ramp onto UTSA Boulevard from I 10. That's why there's this slowdown out there. But you can see I 10 right now just down to one lane as police kind of try and clean up this accident. The San Antonio Food Bank getting a pretty nice gift today, $6,000 from Duncan. Now more than ever, families need uh, families in need are turning to the food bank for help. SA Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper tells us the donation will go a long way in the fight against hunger in South Texas. To have Dunkin' Donuts step up right in time for the holidays to be able to provide a generous gift that generates 42,000 meals for residents throughout South Texas, it just doesn't get any better than that. Truly was from donuts to dollars. Due to the challenges of the pandemic, the San Antonio Food Bank went from serving 60,000 people a week to 120,000 people a week. Look outside with live cam this evening, 63 degrees out there. It was gray, it felt kind of damp outside, but we actually have some real rain chances to talk about Adam. Yeah, finally some rain in the forecast again, and that's going to be tonight on into the first part of your Saturday. We started the day today at 36, so we had the chill in the air this morning. Then we made it up to 64 for the high temperature below average in the morning and pretty much right on par later on in the day. Currently, we've got those clouds streaming overhead and some breaks in the clouds right now, but the clouds will continue to fill in and we'll have that lead to some areas of drizzle and light rain tonight. 63 degrees right now. Dew point of 54. That's important because our air is becoming saturated and 
That dew point is going to, in the clouds, prevent us from getting anywhere near freezing later tonight. So 50s in the hill country now, temperatures not falling much for the rest of the night. 60s, low 60s around Bear County, 65 though, Pleasanton, 63 Hondo, and Canyon Lake now at 62, where we had a little sunshine, it was warmer, 72 Laredo, and right now 65 in Del Rio. So this evening, just basically steady temperatures. They'll be dropping off a few degrees down to about 57 at 10 p.m. at midnight with some patchy drizzle developing over the coming hours and some scattered showers as well. So some scattered areas of rain tonight through about 10, 11 a.m. And then tomorrow afternoon, we'll have a lot of sunshine, but you will notice the breeze out of the north at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. 55 in the morning tomorrow, 68 and sunny by the afternoon. So despite a damp start to the day, it's going to be a sunny afternoon. And hey, the aquifer is up a little bit today, but we're still about six and a half feet below the December average. Only mold reported low at 130. We'll be back to talk about Sunday and of course next week's cold front coming up. Cases continue to surge here in Bear County and San Antonio. More than 1,600 new COVID-19 COVID cases reported just yesterday. Yeah, and you could obviously tell all week the worry uh, in the voices of both the mayor and the county judge. Let's go live to City Hall now for the latest update. Chief Medical Officer, as well as uh, Dr. Brian, excuse me, uh, Chief of Pharmacy, Elliot Mandel, uh, they're gonna be talking about vaccines that are being, being distributed and administered here in San Antonio. And this is our COVID-19 update for the San Antonio community. Tonight, we're reporting 936 new cases of COVID-19 in San Antonio, which pushed the San Antonio case count to more, more than 100,000 since the pandemic began. Our new seven-day moving average remains very high at 1,078. Unfortunately, there are two new deaths to report this evening, a Hispanic male in his 50s and another male in his 50s. Our thoughts and prayers are with their friends and families as they are with all of the survivors of the many people that we've lost due to this virus uh, in, in San Antonio over the last year. In our hospitals tonight, there has been a slight dip in the total number of patients to 832. However, there are 110 new admissions in the last 24 hours. So again, over the last four days, we've seen a very, very high number of admissions in the 24 hour period. 275 patients are in the ICU and 140 are on ventilators. Available staffed beds are right at 9% this evening. Let me turn it over to Judge Wolf. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. And we all know we're still in a very dangerous time as you heard the numbers. Uh, you know, we say it over and over, but I don't think we can say it enough. It's all about human behavior, not the place. And we can't conquer this without uh, good human behavior. And we know what that means. We know that means uh, face covering. We know it means social distance. We know it means sanitation. So we really encourage you to continue to move forward. I don't want to take much time because I want Elliot and Brian to be able to talk. Uh, Mayor and I were out at the Bear County Hospital uh, District today doing businesses, University Hospital. And uh, we got to see firsthand uh, how the vaccines work. And so... Uh, it was a very interesting and enlightening thing for us. I don't want to take away from their time so they can tell us a little bit about how it's going. Yeah, thank you, Judge. And yeah, it was this morning that the judge and I visited University Health. And this week, as you know, they began administering the vaccines here in our community. The virus has undoubtedly ravaged our community and our frontline workers have dealt with the nonstop trauma of this virus day in and day out for several months now. So please join me and the judge and thanking them for their service. And so, as you see on the screen there, that, that was one of the many things that they are doing to prepare the vaccine for distribution. And so let me turn it over now to Dr. Alsip and Elliot. All right, the mayor there talking about COVID-19 vaccines arriving in San Antonio already being administered. We do have a lot of information on our website about that right now. And KSAT explains an episode answering some of the biggest vaccine questions. So let's take a look at the numbers to recap here. 936 new cases confirmed today, reported today, and that seven day moving average, 1,078 cases on average every 24 hours. Yeah, and two new deaths bringing our total to 1,442. 832 patients in the hospital today. That is down a little bit, but he said that there were 110 admissions in the last 24 hours. That's a number that they see pretty steadily right now. And uh, County Judge Nelson Wolf saying there is no doubt we are still in a dangerous time. So Absolutely. we'll continue, of course, 
to monitor the situation. Let's turn now to the forecast out there heading towards the weekend and some rain chances, Adam. Yeah, it's nice to have rain chances back in the forecast, and it's really just going to impact your night tonight and first part of your Saturday. So let's get right to it. Take a look at our overall weather pattern. We have a decent spread of clouds across not just South Texas, but the entire state. And this is in advance of an upper level system that's moving in and even an associated cold front, but the kind of cold front that when it hits us tomorrow, you're not going to really notice it. It's not going to have a big impact on our temperatures. It's just going to squeeze a little extra moisture out of these clouds. So let's talk about it. The low clouds are still filling in and we've had them for a good part of the day here in San Antonio. So we go through the night, we'll start to see some areas of drizzle, a few sprinkles here and there. So some damp roadways, especially to start your Saturday. We are anticipating some widely separated showers, some of which could have a little bit of lightning and thunder. And if you do, it's actually not such a bad thing because you'll probably have a heavier shower at that point. You'll get a little more rain out of that out of that shower. But by and large, just some hit or miss areas of light to moderate rain with drizzle in between. Notice 9 a.m. still some activity out there. By 10, 11 a.m. it generally moves east of I-35. And east of I-35 is where I think we'll have the highest potential in terms of rainfall accumulation. So between I-37 and I-10, you could see a quarter to maybe even half an inch of rain. And if you get a thunderstorm, maybe a little bit more. But I think for most of us, the high end potential is a quarter of an inch and that may be a little generous, especially when you get south and west of I-35 there. All right, so this weekend we'll start the day tomorrow with the dampness early in the day and then by midday the sun comes out. We'll have a sunny afternoon. You'll notice the breeze out of the north a little gusty at times 68. The high temperature Sunday. We go from 38 in the morning to near 70 in the afternoon. Sunny gentle breeze. We get into Monday and Tuesday. Lower 70s should be good viewing for the great conjunction. We're going to talk more about that coming up next half hour, but we do have a, a cold front expected Wednesday and that should cool us off a little bit for Christmas Eve with highs in the upper 50s. All right, thanks Adam. All right, it's Friday night and we are talking high school playoff football action. Larry joins us. Larry. That is correct. Uh, Brennan Bears, one of the top 6A teams in the area and the state. They have an explosive offense and a tough as nails defense. Tonight they will face Edinburgh Vela in the Class 6A playoff second round. And DeMarvin Leal tells us how the Aggies D linemen prep for tomorrow's matchup against Tennessee. Coming up. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by CPS Energy. Hi, I'm Frank Almaraz, Chief Administrative and Business Development Officer for CPS Energy. And I want to wish a happy holidays to all of our service members and our first responders. Happy holidays. To finish, to keep doing what we keep doing, to keep pushing, to keep uh, climbing, to keep stepping, uh, going over those stepping stones and just uh, figure out who we want to be. DeMarvin Leal says that's the mindset of the Aggies ahead of their clash with Rocky Top and Big Board Sports. The winners of five straight, the Brennan Bears will face the Edinburgh Vela Sabercats in the second round of Class 6A Division II playoffs tonight. The Bears opened the playoffs last week with a dominating win at Ferris Stadium, shutting out Del Rio 48 to nothing while holding the Rams to 33 yards of total offense and forcing four turnovers. Now, the Sabercats come to town a perfect 7-0 after beating West Laco 38-33 in the first round. Bella, they're, they're a pretty good team. Uh, we're, we're locked in. We're ready to go. We've been having a great week of practice. Um, we've been doing what we're supposed to do. Everybody's been flying around, and everybody's real pumped up to get, get it going. The Bears are 9-1 this season and District 29-6A champions. No easy task when you consider how much COVID-19 is still impacting the high school football season. It's really exciting to be here. You know, I was one of those optimist kind of guys that thought, hey, you know, this is going to go away and we're going to have a season and everything's going to be normal. And obviously it didn't turn out that way. And, and uh, so finishing the season was exciting. And the fact that we're still rolling is exciting. And, and uh, I hope we can, you know, play it all the way out. I'm, I'm fairly confident we will, but each week is new and different. And, you know, we got to adjust here and there. And, and that's what we're going to do. Because uh, at the end of the day, you know, these seniors and, and these kids, regardless of age, you know, that they've done a lot of sacrificing on their own just to be here as well. So hopefully we can pull it off and, and uh, keep playing and, and just let this thing play out as it goes. 
kickoff between Brennan and Vela is 7 tonight at Buccaneer Stadium in Corpus Christi. Highlights on the night beat. Now the Sabercats are led by former Madison, Brandeis, and John Jay head coach John Campbell. Number 5, Texas A&M will play Tennessee tomorrow morning to close out their regular season. At 7-1, A&M has a final chance to improve its resume before the final four teams are selected for the college football playoff. And a big win could help the Aggies if any of the top four teams slip. Aggies defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal says getting ready for a game like this one starts at practice when they face the Aggies O-line, one of the best in the SEC. We practice every single day like it's a game, honestly. So we go when we go good on good, it's like a full game. So that's how the game, that's how, that's how we get prepared for the games. We practice like it's a game. We prepare and we stick to our keys and we try to make each other better. Leal has a team high seven quarterback hits to go with his one and a half sacks. Kick is tomorrow morning at 11. Last night in the Spurs preseason finale, point guard DeJounte Murray handed out four assists in their loss to the Rockets. In three preseason games, Murray averaged five assists, two more than his career average. Murray wants to be more of a facilitator this season. I'm a team guy. You know, obviously I could be greedy, you know, and get to the rim or get my shots off, you know, if they're, they're there. But uh, mainly I'm looking to, to find my teammates, you know, because I want my teammates to be able to say they love playing with me. So. Yeah, that's, that's the category I definitely want to grow in. Spurs will open the regular season Wednesday night at the Memphis Grizzlies, 7 p.m. tip at the FedEx Forum. Rumor they're going to wear the uh, Fiesta jerseys during that game, I hear. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's a rumor. <laughs> Just the <a> rumor. <laughs> we'll be right back. Separating the fact from the fiction is what we aim to do every day on KSAT 12 News and especially on our KSAT Q&A segments. And when it comes to vaccines and the COVID vaccine, there are a lot of mis there's a lot of misinformation out there. I saw something on the web today that said the Moderna vaccine has 21% of the people have adverse effects to it. Not true. It's 0.5%. And that's one of the reasons we have the Reverend Dr. Kenneth Kemp from Antioch Missionary Baptist Church with us. He's a reverend. He's a medical doctor. He also can talk about the unique challenges of building trust in some of our minority communities. Reverend, thank you for joining us. Your first off, your reaction to this vaccine. Do you feel it's safe? Personally, I feel it's safe. Uh, in fact, I just had my vaccine today. I had my my injection. Uh, at about uh, 220 or so today and didn't feel a thing. I'm doing fine. So let's talk then about uh, that hesitancy with trusting the vaccine, especially in the minority community. Do you think there are challenges unique to, to building that trust among minorities? Yes, there are some unique challenges with uh, minorities, uh, particularly in the African American community. Um, we have had uh, to endure a legacy of uh, disrespect to humanity with, with regard to African Americans. And, and it's also true among our Latinx uh, uh, friends. Um, and that, that legacy is what uh, causes people to have a hesitancy with regard to anything that the government uh, promulgates as being uh, necessary. We, we will pause and we'll ask, is this really necessary? Uh, or are we are we being uh, used as pawns or guinea pigs? Are you hearing some of this hesitancy in your own congregation? Absolutely. I hear it among our congregation, but not just our congregation. I hear it uh, in people I communicate with uh, in just regular conversation. I hear it at the hospital uh, where uh, I uh, where I work. So uh, we have uh, people who are health care providers who are concerned about about that issue. Uh, but then there, there is the legitimate concern that the, the, the vaccine was developed so rapidly uh, that there may be adverse effects that have not yet surfaced. And so people are a little, little concerned. What's your answer to them? What do you say if somebody comes up to you and goes, Reverend, I know you're a medical doctor. I know you have all this expertise. Why should I feel safe taking this vaccine? Well, the first thing I say to them is you have to make up your own mind. I can't... Um, uh, I can't relieve your anxiety. You have to decide on your own. And that requires information. 
And so you have to go back and think about this, study it, read about it. So you have some uh, some uh, uh, confidence that what has been done uh, has been done in a, in, in a um, uh, legitimate and, and uh, uh, effective way uh, to maintain safety and efficacy. Now, I also say to them that experts have already looked at this from our Food and Drug Administration. Expert researchers have already looked at this. Um, and the work that has been done, while it has been rapid, actually has built up on previous studies. And so we have a lot of information, uh, a, a lot of information to show that this uh, vaccine is, is effective and safe. At least even at this uh, early juncture, there's a lot of information to show that, that, that it's safe and effective. I think you have a really unique position in the community being both a medical doctor as well as a reverend. So what are some ways in which you think we can work to build that trust with this vaccine? What are ways in which either you or your church are trying to do that or, or perhaps, you know, people just out in the community? I think the most important thing is dissemination of information by people um, uh, in whom the community has trust. Not necessarily the politicians, although we love our politicians, and we love our political leaders, uh, most of them at least. Um, but people aren't necessarily going to trust uh, an elected uh, official. They're going to trust their pastors, their doctors, uh, their colleagues and friends. And so those of us who have the, uh, in the, the interface with the community in, in positions of trust, uh, must uh, dialogue about this and uh, share with, with those uh, whom we love, whom we um, respect, uh, our concerns and also our conclusions about, about the vaccine. How concerned are you about accessibility? I mean, we're seeing so we've seen right. outbreaks through parts of town that don't have great access to health care. Are you right. concerned about access to this vaccine being limited that way as well? Yes, yeah, so we, we have to be concerned about that because, you know, we would love to have everybody vaccinated all at once. Uh, and then, wow, you, you got that 70, 80 percent of uh, vaccination rate among the population, that herd immunity that everybody's talked about, and we could reduce the spread of the vaccine. Well, that's really not practical. But we're going to have to make some uh, prioritization uh, and people are going to have to get it uh, in, in various uh, uh, waves. However, uh, we do have uh, the Moderna vaccine that's uh, probably going to get uh, an emergency use authorization from the FDA if it hasn't happened already. Uh, and that vaccine can be transported more readily than the Pfizer vaccine and can be stored um, uh, over a longer period of time uh, without those really, really cold temperatures uh, that are required for the, for the Pfizer vaccine. So hopefully, that will improve uh, distribution. We do have to be concerned about that, though, uh, and there are some um, some barriers there that uh, that we can't necessarily uh, uh, discount, but we got to work around. Would you like to see one of these distribution events at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church? Well, now that's a two-edged sword, sir, um, yeah. because um, you, you don't want to have this distributed by people who don't know what they're doing whether it's at Antioch or any other church. A church is a church. It's a place of faith, a place of uh, spiritual development. So if we had the appropriate trained personnel who came and used the Antioch facility, I would be a, a, the first one to, to support that. Yeah. Uh, but we have to have the appropriate uh, and properly trained personnel to, to administer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we hope that uh, by you taking the time to join us here, we've helped to get some more information out there to hopefully build that trust and at the very least arm people with information to make their own decisions. Reverend Dr. Kenneth Kemp, pastor at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, thanks so much for your time. Bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. All right. KSAT explains this week is on appropriately the COVID-19 vaccine slash vaccines that we are expecting. Tell us a little bit about that, Myra. So a lot of questions, of course, surrounding exactly how these vaccines are going to work, how they'll be distributed and what they're intended to do. Is this something that is supposed to prevent infection or also prevent the spread? That's one big question that we're looking at, uh, especially the safety. That's another tremendous question that so many people have. 
And uh, we're taking a look at what experts are saying, those who were involved in clinical trials right here in San Antonio. Even the development of this being so different than, let's say, the flu vaccine. Oh, I mean, the flu vaccine, it's basically a live virus that's put into you. That is not what happens with this, which I think is a, a big misunderstanding among a lot of people. We're all getting familiar with the term mRNA, yes. messenger RNA. So we explain exactly what that means. And I think that there is uh, some hesitancy uh, added to that because this is new technology, if you will. It's been around a while, but the first time it has been used in a vaccine. So we're explaining exactly how that is supposed to work and taking a look at how fast this was developed because that's given people a lot of pause as well. Uh, you know, remember when we first started hearing about a vaccine, we were told be patient. It's yeah. taken a decade in some cases to create one. Uh, but this really was, uh, to put it very simply, an all hands on deck globally uh, situation to come up with this vaccine. So that certainly contributed to how fast it was able to be developed. And a lot of questions still out there. I mean, we're still learning a lot about this virus. We're learning a lot about how it will be distributed, when it will be distributed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those questions hopefully get answered in this week's KSAT explains. And if I want to watch it, how do I watch it, Myra? Well, Steve, you can go to KSAT.com slash explains. It's streaming there and also on the KSAT TV app. It's on demand, so you can watch it anytime that you would like. All right, from KSAT explains to Kasky explains the weather situation. Adam. We do have a bit to explain here. First of all, we've got the low clouds in place. Hard to tell right there, but you can see the city lights reflecting off the base of those low clouds uh, at the moment right now. And those low clouds are going to lead to some areas of rain. It's nice to have rain back in the forecast for tonight into the first part of the day tomorrow. We'll be back to talk about who's likely to see how much and where it's going to break down across South Texas. Then sunny most of the weekend and we do have to explain the great conjunction, which is really happening on Monday. So we're going to talk about viewing that coming right up. Tis the season for giving and receiving. Unwrap our Christmas primetime show. It's sure to make you smile and laugh a little bit. There's magical destinations free of charge. Let's go explore. Twinkliest town in ever. Indeed, right? And we're feeding you too. Cause what's Christmas without tamales? SA Live's holiday primetime show. Tonight, brought to you by James Avery. We're fine. All right, time saver traffic right now. This is the camera at 410 in Fredericksburg. You can see a lot of flashing lights there. Uh, slow down certainly as uh, first responders there are working an accident, but we don't, don't have a lot of details about what exactly happened here, but you can see a tow truck it looks like is there on the scene. So hopefully uh, things will be cleared up shortly, but definitely a slowdown because of this wreck. All right, a lot of people looking towards one week from today. What will the weather be like? But Adam Kasky has something he wants to tell you about. That's happening on Monday. Adam. And every time I talk about it, Steve starts singing out loud. You <laughs> I may do. not hear it, but the great you conjunction. Don't want to hear it. <laughs> it's yeah. in my head. Yeah, you don't want to hear it. Yeah, and you may have noticed even just over the past several weeks that, uh, as, for example, last night, just underneath the sliver moon, you saw two bright dots in the sky, one brighter than the other, Saturn and Jupiter. Every roughly 20 years, due to their respective orbits around the sun and the way they line up with the Earth's orbit, about every 20 years, they get lined up in the same line of sight and field of view there. And it last occurred in well, the year 2000, next will be about 2040. But this conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in our night sky is going to be the closest they've been in about 400 years. So that's what's more impressive about this one than say the one we had 20 years ago and the one we'll have in the next 20 years. So this is going to peak and they're going to be at their very closest December 21st. So that's Monday and this is right after sunset. The best time is about 45 minutes after sunset. Get outside, look to the southwest about 15 degrees off the horizon. So you want to be in an open area because they're fairly low in the sky and you'll see the bright two dots, the Jupiter, and Saturn close together. If you have binoculars, it'll help a little bit. A telescope, you may even see the res some of their respective moons around them, all within the same field of view there. So pretty neat event going on. Uh, it's significant because it's the closest they've been in about 400 years, and they're not going to be that close again for even longer than that, I believe. Anyway, let's take a look at our satellite and radar. You're not going to notice them out there tonight, but tomorrow night you will. You'll notice those 
two bright looking stars close to each other. We've got the cloud cover out there across the vast majority of the Lone Star State and a big dip in the upper level flow to our west that's headed our way. It's going to have a weak cold front and that cold front's mainly just going to help squeeze out a little extra moisture from these clouds as we get into tomorrow morning. So here's our future cast. I like how it handles this low clouds drizzle developing overnight tonight. A few hit or miss light sprinkles here and there tonight and then tomorrow morning around sunrise. Actually, some areas of rain, a few spotty showers out there widely separated in nature, and we can't rule out a brief thunderstorm as well. And if you do happen to have a thunderstorm in your area, we're not expecting anything severe. It's actually going to be beneficial to you because you'll get more rain if you have a little bit of lightning and thunder. Now the most of the rain, I think the majority of it will be east of I-35. That's where we have the highest rainfall potential, and that's up through about the noon hour, and then the sky clears out. So in terms of the rainfall potential, West and southwest closer to Rio Grande, maybe a trace at best. Locally, a tenth to maybe a quarter of an inch of rain. You get closer to Houston and you could be talking three quarters of an inch. And around Houston, they could easily get an inch of rainfall. And of course, we're still in a drought, so we need all the moisture we can get. We'll take whatever we can get. And at least right now, this activity is looking a little more promising, a little better, a little more impressive than previously thought. 36 was the temperature this morning. Then we topped out at 64. Notice how the temperature hasn't changed much. That's the low clouds. They're a blanket over us right now. So our temperatures will be very slow to drop and they're not going to fall much. 65 now Pleasanton, 56 in Kerrville. Dew points are protecting us as well. We've got the low clouds acting as a blanket, but the temperature also can't drop past the dew point. And these dew points are near 50. So well above freezing tonight for everybody. 55 in the morning tomorrow with those areas of rain and overall dampness. Then we'll dry out. The road should dry out by about 1 or 2 p.m. I think bright sunshine with a noticeable breeze in the afternoon at 68. So comfortable and a little above average for this time of year. Sunday we start the day in the upper 30s, make it to near 70. So a beautiful and comfortable day. We get into Monday. looks like pretty good viewing for the great conjunction. We could have some high thin clouds, but I think we'll mostly be clear. So at about 615 Monday evening, get outside with the kids. Look to the southwest low on the horizon. Oh, by the way, yes, you're talking about Christmas. <laughs> I almost forgot so yeah, much happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wednesday is going to be a cold front. That's going to cool us off for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Looking like a freeze in the morning, the near 60 in the afternoon. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's ICYMI. It is Friday, the 18th of December. Bear County deputies are looking for several suspects and witnesses from a shooting last night during what they say was a drug deal gone wrong. Two people are now dead, 20 year old Robert Smith and a 14 year old whose identity has not been released. Sheriff Salazar said a group of people met up to do a drug deal when the suspect showed up and attempted to rob the group. It's during that altercation that led to the shooting. Just the mere fact that a 14 year old is, is present during a drug deal, especially one that went bad and unfortunately that 14 year old paid for his paid for it with his life uh, is is that much more tragic. One man is in the hospital after police say he was shot on the west side. Police say two suspects shot him in the leg at a nearby apartment complex. The victim drove to a quick trip gas station before calling for help. He was taken then to University Hospital and is expected to recover. Well, over in Colorado, police are searching for this person that's accused of robbing a convenience store. Yep, in a really creepy clown mask. Surveillance video shows the suspect entering the store holding a knife wearing a blue clown mask with orange hair. Police say the suspect threatened an employee before running away with cash. How about some good news now? The Johnson High School marching band accomplishing something no other area high school has done in 35 years. The Jaguar band won its first state championship for its performance of its 2020 show called Know Who You Are. It's been a long road, like all the rehearsals, and everything to lead up to eventually getting a trophy. It's just amazing. We have some breaking news. Just into the KSAT 12 newsroom, the FDA has now given emergency use authorization to the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah, happening just moments ago. This means that millions more 
Vaccine doses will be heading out to area hospitals. Again, healthcare workers will get vaccinated first, then long term care facility residents. Again, the Moderna vaccine approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration just moments ago. More good news in the fight against COVID-19. Adam. All right, some areas of rain and drizzle tonight through about the noon hour on Saturday, up to a quarter of an inch here and there, maybe higher accumulations uh, far east of San Antonio. Then a sunny afternoon, little breezy, 68, sunny and near 70 on Sunday, low 70s early next week. Then a Wednesday cold front is likely to hit us, dropping our temperatures back to near freezing Christmas Eve and Christmas Day during the mornings and highs only near 60 at that point. So there will be a cold front to make it feel a little more like Christmas, if you will, but don't expect any snow. Sorry, kids. <laughs> you can at least get outside and play with the outside toys. That That's Santa right. Has. <laughs> you know, we have a treat coming up next for you. Mike and Fiona in their jammies. <laughs> the SA Live Christmas special comes your way next. <laughs>